I must say the support on my prior Warhammer video has been, to put it lightly, absolutely outstanding. I've not had a video perform that well in maybe three to four years, and it's also a breath of fresh air to be able to make a video on something on a whim, on Warhammer, a while very popular game, not a game that I ever really made videos on, and to have it perform as well as it does. You know, YouTube and the YouTube world doesn't like change very much, so it is incredibly heartwarming. But with that, it also came with a question that was always being asked to me ever since making that video, hey Bricky, what army should I play? So for this, my next major Warhammer video, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to go over all the different kinds of armies just like we went with the main video, except instead of lore, we're going to be going through the different various ways of collecting the army, as in not only price-wise, but how many models you're going to need, how new or old the model scopes are, and we're going to be going over the play styles of each army respectively. Are they melee? Are they shooting? Are they a little bit of both elite armies with only 20 models on the battlefield or horde armies with 120 models on the battlefield? We're going to be discussing all of those, what each army is about, and give you at least a decent run through of every single faction to allow you to make the conscious and intelligent choice on which army you want to play if you want to get into the tabletop of Warhammer 40,000. But first, before we start, I need to show you something. So I own an absolute like, boatload of wall art all across my house I've received from cons. And so when I was contacted by Displate to sponsor this video, it was like an immediate yes. Anyway, I wanted to show you the ones I got because Displate is the sponsor for this video. The first one is a wonderful one from the Coen Brothers, No Country for Old Men. This is probably my favorite movie of all time because I am a messed up human being and I like the dark, depressing shit. However, this one, I love it. It's very simplistic and it shows off the simplistic poster art that I tend to enjoy a lot. Now past that, I actually got one for my mother because she is a huge Stephen King fan. So I got this fantastic Pennywise one to go along with it. And the third one I got actually was from fellow YouTuber Vaddy Vidya. You may know him. He did Dark Souls content and, well, from software content in general. And he has, I can't show you it right now because I got the extra large version because I wanted the big one of his. It is an absolutely like, gorgeous piece. It is just as nice looking in real life as I expected. Now it come to my surprise that after I ordered three separate disc plates to go along with the sponsorship, I immediately receive one, two, three, four, five extra ones and then change. And I kind of start realizing why they, they were, uh, they wanted a Warhammer video so much. Orcs, 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 orcs. Gotta have orcs. Sisters of Battle, we'll be talking plenty about them today. Angels of Death in all their glory. More Angels of Death in all their glory. And a Drukhari, I, I don't know what this is. Is it an Archon? It might be an Archon, I don't play Drukhari, but obviously Dark Eldar. I know the spikes, I get the spikes. I love the fact that you can just slap it onto your wall with a magnet with no fuss. And especially for someone who was renting a place, and I know a lot of you have had those experiences with landlords where you try to hang up wall art, you put a nail into the wall and they're like, oh, Ooh, is that, is that a two millimeter hole I see right there? That's $300 out of your security deposit, kid. So thank you very much, Display, for sponsoring this video. I would highly recommend checking them out. They make absolutely fantastic stuff. So check them out, they're in the description, and let us continue with the video, starting off with a couple terminology we should learn before we actually get super deep into it. First things first, there's a thing called Forge World. Forge World is actually a lore thing with the Adidas Mechanicus. However, what it is, is actually a partner to Games Workshop. Forge World makes these kind of custom minis that aren't in the codexes specifically. However, you can use them and field them in your games. They're just generally expensive, uh, kind of a little bit weirder. They're a little bit more bizarre and sometimes like fan-made creations and such. But Forge World is like a side company of Games Workshop that makes 40K. I might mention them a few times. I wanted to go ahead and tell you about that. They're not used a ton, but they are something that you can use. Next, I want to tell you about hitting numbers. So if I ever say something like, oh, this army hits on threes or fours or fives, what I'm saying is if they hit on threes, that means if you roll a D6 and you throw it out there, if you get a three, four, five, or six, anything three or higher, then you hit your shot. You've landed onto your target. If I say they hit on fours, it's four and up fives, five and up, etc. And finally, we have things called stratagems. I'm gonna mention those a few times. Stratagems are like special abilities you can use after having a pool of command points that you get for building your army. And you can kind of dole those out, these special ability stratagems as you wish. You ever played Command and Conquer, uh, Red Alert 3, or, or perhaps uh, Kane's Wrath? My personal favorite was always Kane's Wrath. You know those little abilities on the side of the map? It's like those. Let's start off with the number one best army you should collect for a new player. 
Space Marines. Before we get into tactics, before we get into how they play, I want to remind you all of the most important rule, the golden rule of collecting Warhammer. You will always have a better time with the army whose lore you like and design you prefer. Always buy the army you think are the coolest. If you like undead Egyptian space robots that have enslaved gods as weapons, buy the damn Necrons. I don't care if Necrons are S tier or F tier, buy the damn Necrons, okay? If you love Viking aesthetic and you love space marines, get the damn space wolves. I don't care if they're S tier or F tier, get the army that you love the lore and the design of first. Nothing sucks more than playing a meta army that some people might not even want to play you against because you're going super power gamer and having to paint and create an army that you don't like. Play the army you think is the coolest. Golden rule. Okay, Space Marines. So the poster boys of Warhammer are our first faction today, and I know when I said that the best army to collect, all the new players are like, oh god, not the Space Marines, the generic ones. And all the veteran players are going to say, oh god, not more Space Marine players I got to deal with. And the tournament players are already ready to hire a hitman to kill me. But I'm sorry, I know, I agree, Space Marines are, whew! right now but they really are the best army if you are a new player space marines are your best bet they are the best army to collect if you are a new player and let me tell you why number one space marines got all the lore they got a monopoly on lore they easily have the most fleshed out backgrounds of any of the characters or factions in warhammer space marines have the most books space marines are a huge part of the horus heresy just space marines will always have the most and they have the most depth to them number two space marines are very easy to paint especially for new players when you get space marines you have a ton of variety of chapters and they all have a ton variety of colors and they're also pretty easy space marines are also very large or at least larger than normal so their canvas size is much bigger smooth armor much easier to paint especially their vehicles and the paint schemes are easy ultramarines blue white scar white imperial fist yellow salamanders green it's extremely easy to paint space marines and for a new player I would highly recommend them for that specific part because the painting and building is a massive part of this hobby. Number three, Marines are always getting new models. They are always getting equal attention from Games Workshop. Even if they have just been updated, they will get updated again and again and again. And the Harlequins and Dark Eldar players are crying in a corner, but we don't care about them because I got a new Primaris Lieutenant and he's got a skull shield. I don't know. They're always getting new models, and while it might be a little excessive at times, they will always be updated and your rules will always be changing, and therefore it keeps it very fresh if you're interested in playing them. Number four, you have a vast amount of data sheets and units at your disposal. See, in a codex, you have a part, after all the lore of it, after some of the keywords and art pieces and stuff, you have the data sheet section where it goes over all of your units and what they do and their stats and everything, their special rules, and so on and when you get to that spot however many units an army has depends on well you know how many pages of data sheets is it take the adeptus custodies they have a very small amount of units and their standard codex of data sheets is only 11 pages long sisters of battle however a little more medium force they have 19 pages of data sheets the imperial guard they have a much much larger amount of data sheets because they're such a large army they have 39 pages of data sheets. Space Marines? 56. 56 pages of data sheets for different kinds of units. It's a little bloated at times because of the amount of characters and stuff, but still, they are all over the place. Their variety is endless, and it is being even more updated and added as time goes on. Which brings me to number five, and the most important of them all, Space Marines use every phase of the game. See, in Warhammer, there are phases in each turn. Uh, we're just getting into ninth edition, so we're getting something called the Command Phase soon, which is fine. But then we have the Movement Phase, Psychic Phase, Shooting Phase, the charge 
fight, and then morale phase. Now, the last three are kind of all packed into one, if I'm being perfectly honest, but the main thing is that a lot of armies might utilize some of these phases a lot more often than expected. Grey Knights are very big in the Psychic phase because they're all Psychers, and so they really have a lot there. While Tau don't have any Psychers, and they won't even use that phase, but they've got really damn good shooting. However, they don't have any melee, so they're not going to be using the Charge phase, whereas, say, Slanesh Demons will use the Charge and Psychic phase plenty, but they won't be doing any shooting of like any kind pretty much the marines they will use every single phase and you can't get good at the game and get good at the phases unless you're able to use all of them and that's where space marines really shine you can play them however you want in any kind of role see if you are running let's say an iron hands or imperial fist army these are both shooting based armies but you can still have good melee. Where if you wanted to play a more melee-based army like Space Wolves or Blood Angels, you'd still have good shooting units. You could still do plenty in the shooting phase. That's the most important part. Space Marines will use every single phase and they are very, very good at it. So that is the main five reasons why you should be playing, or at least you should try collecting Space Marines. And I know I don't need more Space Marines in tournaments, but it is the best decision. They're good to paint, they're good to collect, they're always getting updated, they got tons of units, they use every phase, and you can tailor them however you'd like. Plus, and this is kind of down the line, but eventually after playing them enough, you might understand which army you'd want to collect second. If you start collecting a little bit of Space Marines, you start realizing, oh wow, I really think I'd prefer having more models on the table, or I wish I had tougher models. Then you can go for Tyranids or then Adeptus Custodians. It helps you figure out your second army a lot better. If you're a new player, you want to get interested in it, just do this. Go online, get yourself either, oh, or check eBay, because there's tons of offhand Marine stuff on eBay. Get yourself a pack of Intercessors, or maybe a Tactical Squad. I'd say Intercessors because they're more modern, they're newer and more meta and they're bigger for better paint canvases. Put them together with some glue, get some paint on them, try them out and, and try getting into the game that way. I think it'd be a, a pretty smart and a pretty solid idea to get someone new into the hobby and Space Marines just really are one of the better choices right now. Okay, whew, now that I'm done sucking as much Marine dick as, as your brain, let's move on to the rest of the armies. And my personal favorite army at the current moment, the Imperial Guard or the Estimia Tower. The fucking the Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard are my main army. They are what is known as a gunline horde army. Whereas Orcs and Tyranids have a horde army that has shooting but it's more melee based, the Guard is going to be running 60 to 100 infantry men, support walkers, artillery batteries, uh, aircraft, drop troops, tanks, bigger tanks. The guard is all about just blistering firepower. Now, however, the downside to this is that the guard, while well-trained, are only four up well-trained. They hit on fours, and they also do not have very good survivability. Guard stuff tends to be rather fragile. They very rarely have any special saves to keep them from taking any damage. Uh, most of their stratagems aren't based around survivability, but in fact, more firepower. Guard don't shoot amazing with their four up accuracy, but they make up for that with just sheer amounts of numbers of shots. I don't care care if my tank hits on fours when I've got fucking three of them. If the Marines are like the pristine Swiss Army knife where they can do anything and they have a little tool for every situation, guard like a Swiss Army knife that's about 10 times as big and attached to a big wooden stick that you just beat the shit out of people with. Your units are squishy, they don't hit great, but you've got so many of them that you just take people out by drowning them in gunfire. As for collecting the guard, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Their models are a bit older than I'd like. I personally think that they could use a decent amount of updates. Uh, they do get updated plenty rules-wise, but since they've got so many different kinds of units and so many Forge World options, a lot of them are a bit old and are showing their age. As for collecting them in the money side, they're pretty expensive. Expensive. You're going for a horde army, so you're going to have tons of models on the on the playing field. That being said, I still do love them. I love their lore and their design. I love the large swaths of infantry, and I personally think they are pretty fun. If maybe not the greatest army 
as a main army. The Adeptus Mechanicus are the war cult of Mars. They are very weird, and I've been over how weird they are plenty before, but they are probably one of the wackiest armies in the game, maybe along with Gene Steeler cults. The Adeptus Mechanicus have a lot of really weird back and forth styles when it comes to their gameplay. They're mainly a shooting army. I'd say they're about 75% shooting, 25% melee. However, they do have a couple dedicated melee units that can hurt pretty bad, but they're much lower on the tier list compared to the amount of gunfire they can bring. They hit pretty well. They generally hit on threes, sometimes fours, depending on if they're using mechs or their own current bionics. Uh, but they do definitely have some of the wackier stuff. The entire army has a six up invulnerability save, so occasionally you get some pretty clutch moments when you start taking damage and you roll a couple dice and you get a couple sixes and you can shrug off <laughs> like full-on missiles and stuff. So that is pretty cool. Like one of their base weapons is a really regular kind of crappy carbine, but if you roll a six for it, it does double damage, which can actually be ludicrously powerful at times. Uh, then you've got the weird robots, the Castellan robots, that they are these giant, like, World War I mech dudes that have a refractor field, so if they block off shots with their well, you know, Reflector and Vulnerable save, it'll launch back damage towards the enemy, which can be kind of crazy. They're, they're very strange. They definitely are quite strange. Much more shooting over melee and definitely fun. It has some great looking characters. Belisarius Call might be one of the best models in the entire game. Super cool looking too. A bitch to paint though, oh my god. And that does lead me to the collecting of the ad mech part <laughs> itself. Uh, they're actually getting a lot more newer updates lately. They're actually one of the newest armies as well. They came out only a couple years ago. All their stuff is in plastic and it looks really damn good. I personally think that they have some of the best aesthetics in the entire game. The only problem is that painting them is going to be a real bitch. I would recommend trying to do some of the simpler stuff, like maybe the Dune Crawler, before you get into things like Call or a Tech Priest Dominus, because wow, is painting that going to be really damn hard. Cost-wise, they are getting a bunch of new units, which is great, but generally when you get new units, they are very expensive, and whenever new stuff comes out, it tends to be a bit expensive. The army isn't a horde, but it's also not an elite army, so they're probably in the mid-ground when it comes to price range. However, I would recommend them to people who like some kind of wacky antics and some weird weird abilities and, and weaponry because Admech has been getting better and better as time goes on and they're pretty dang cool to collect. So mid-tier price, maybe a little bit more expensive, but their scopes look great and they're very new and I would highly recommend them. Next up, you've got the Adepta Sororitas, or also known as the Sisters of Battle, my second favorite army, though I will be honest, they are really coming up to overtaking the Imperial Guard. I love my guard, I love my I love my Cadians, I love my, my, my uh, Tempesta Scions, but the Sisters of Battle, they're really cool. Not only from a lore perspective, they're just insanely religious zealotous nuns. That already is just really dang cool. As for the tabletop, they're one of the closest range armies in the entire game that isn't a full-on melee army. They're a slow-moving, like, advancing gunline army with some actually horrifying melee units and just some, like, ridiculous ridiculous close range firepower. The Sisters are probably one of the top three hardest armies to play, I'd say. They've got some really weird antics as well, kind of like Admech, maybe not quite as wacky. This army can be played in almost any way as well. You can do this a full gunline army or a full melee army or 50-50. Everything is viable. They do require a lot of finesse and manipulation because these are all low toughness Sisters that do have good armor, but when you've got a low toughness like they do and they're not not necessarily the most powerful when it comes to the actual punching. They can actually be shot off pretty quickly. So you need to be really smart on how you maneuver them because you've got a super short range, kind of squishy army at times. That can be a little bit challenging to get through. That being said, people are sleeping on the power of sisters. Let me be the first one to say it. You are all sleeping on how strong this army is. This army, if played well by a smart person, will crush you. As for the actual collecting of the models, Sisters are the most recent army, at least as the time of making this video, who have had a complete army overhaul. For a while, there were no plastic sister models whatsoever, but the entire army, besides I think one unit, got a full overhaul of models. Everything is brand spanking new, and they probably have the best looking models in the entire game, in my opinion. 
they look incredible. That crazy, gothic, uh, kind of Catholic nun look. I mean, come on, they're, they're tank is a pipe organ missile launcher. It's a pipe organ missile launcher. Sisters are one of the coolest looking armies in the entire game. They are a bit expensive though. That's the one downside is that because this entire army is brand new, it is brand new with a brand new price tag. So I personally love them. They might soon become my favorite army. I can't quite tell yet. Uh, they look great. They're a little expensive to collect. They have lots of different kinds of abilities, both melee and shooting. No psychic phase, but they do have some shenanigans to stop other people from using the psychic phase. They're pretty cool, but they are really hard to play and they take a lot of practice. So kind of up to you. I would say not a very good starting army, but they are pretty neat. All right, Grey Knights, I heard you like the psychic phase. If you like the psychic phase, this is the psychic phase for you. Grey Knights are Space Marines X2. They're super mega duper elite Space Marines that are all psychers. They're nuts. Grey Knights are insane. They are very, very elite. However, you have probably like maybe 40% fewer models than an average army will have. All of your dudes, however, are scary in their own right. They all hit very well on threes minimum. They all have great armor. Since they're all psychers, they're really good at dealing with other psychers. They also have great shooting and very strong melee. All of your guys have extremely powerful melee weapons. The only downside of Grey Knights is that any anti-psycho shenanigans can really harm them and you are running an elite army with very few models. When you run very few models, that means every time you're rolling and you roll those ones, it hurts that much more. Grey Knights, though, they have this awesome kind of old school night round table aesthetic with them all carrying things like halberds and falchions. They've got it's hell holy text and they carry books around and flags, but they do get to use every phase as well. Lots of psychic and then they're shooting and a ton of melee as well. Mainly psychic and melee. In terms of buying them, they're not too bad actually. They're probably one of the cheaper armies as well because when you're running an elite army, not as many models on the tabletop, so it's a lot easier to fill out your entire army by only purchasing saying many or fewer boxes than normal. Uh, as for their sculpts, I don't know exactly how new they are. I wouldn't call them very new. I call them like middle ground when it comes to how old they are. They're not super old, but they're not necessarily super new either. That being said, if they are say medium old or whatever, they do look great. I love the way the plastic models look. I think they look fantastic. And I would recommend trying them out if you like a psycho heavy Space Marine thing. You play Space Marines and you're like, wow, I like the psychic phase. Grey Knights, no competition. Infantry is for losers. It's big mech boy time. Uh, if I'm being honest though, the Imperial Knights, I wouldn't recommend them. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I don't think Imperial Knights are a very good army for a new player. They are one of the cheapest armies you can buy because while each knight in its own right is very expensive, there you only need three or four to fill out an entire game's worth. And compare that to a full army, they're actually not too bad, like price-wise. The problem with knights is that as cool as they are, uh, they want to use the psyche phase. They have plenty of shooting, though, plenty of shooting, and they can have some really great melee. But when you're playing Imperial Knights, you're not really playing 40K. Uh, a great friend of mine said, if you're playing Imperial Knights, you're playing chess, but you have about six queens against a normal enemy chess player. If the enemy chess player is smart, they can easily beat your six queens. I'm sure it'll be pretty simple for them to use their full arsenal to beat you. But if the enemy chess player is a noob, for instance, then there's a good chance that they're not going to be able to win and you'll just kind of noob stomp them. And that's what knights are. Knights are generally noob stompers or more like a just a middle tier army. They're not good for new players because they don't really teach you the game and it's not the way the game is really, I don't know how to say it, meant to be played, so to speak. I got nothing against knight players. If you're a knight player, it's totally fine. If you run a knight valiant, you have nothing but my respect. All right, get that knight valiant, two up armor, four up invul, traitor's pyre. Oh, oh, you can't have both. Just have traitor's pyre, the coolest weapon in the game. All right, but honestly, just for a new player, I would not recommend knights. They are cool. They're great painting projects. However, if you just want to paint something, definitely pick up a knight for that. They look great. You're not really playing 40K when you play Imperial Knights. You're playing a kind of a weird hybrid of it. If anything, 
get a normal army, like, a, say, Imperial Guard or maybe some Space Marines, and then buy one big knight and throw it into your army as an ally. That would be the way to do it, I'd say. I think they're better as a supplementary character as opposed to a main army or force. This is also the same for Chaos Knights as well. Um, they do look really cool, though. They do look really cool. Golden Boys! Golden Boys! Adeptus Custodians are the elite of the elite. This is probably one of the most elite armies you could possibly play. These guys are nuts. They hit on twos or higher in shooting and melee. They have triple the health of a normal Space Marine. They have a better armor save than a normal Space Marine. They all have invulnerable refractor fields around them, which most armies do not have. They're tougher than Marines. They get to reroll ones in the shooting and melee phase when a certain captain is near them, which means they're hitting on twos, rerolling ones. You absolutely murder people in melee. You've got some okay shooting. Your shooting is hit or miss, but your melee is insane, and you use about 20 models. They are literally the definition of Chad Thundercock, okay? Chad Thundercock, if, if that was a human being, it would be a custodian. Okay, the problem is that you only have 15, 20, 25 models in your entire army. It is absolutely crazy how powerful these guys are, but they do pay the price for it. That being said, when it comes to collecting them, they are one of the cheapest armies you can buy. Because they're so elite, you don't need as many things to purchase, you don't need as many models to have on the field, so buying custodians is much cheaper than your average army. It's an elite army, and also they're much easier to paint, in my opinion, because they're so big, because they're like two feet taller than a space marine, lots of a big canvas for your painting, and they're almost all gold. Gold isn't that hard to paint, I wouldn't say. So they're good for painting, they're not very expensive. I would say they're not bad at beginner army, if I'm being honest. They're probably, they're pretty cool, they have a nice kind of power fantasy to them, but as an elite army, every one you roll, it's gonna really hurt. So that's something you should be worried about, or warned about at least. They are pretty neat though. I'm not gonna touch on the Assassin, Sisters of Silence, or Inquisition too much because they're not really a, an actual army. The Assassins are really damn cool. There's four of them and you get to pick one to add to your army as you see fit. They all have different things they do and specialize in. A sniper, a horde clear, a kind of confusion specialist, and an anti-psyker character. Cool, their scopes are really nice and since they're only single characters, not too expensive, but you really can't make an army out of them. They're more of a supplementary character. The Sisters of Silence just recently got an update to allow you to field them with custodians, which is awesome and super cool and is actually kind of a, a big part of them because the Sisters of Silence are big anti-psyker, but they only have maybe two kits, three kits in their entire army and that's about it. They're not really worth collecting in their own right unless you're already collecting custodians. And the Inquisition are a whole bunch of just little characters, basically. A whole bunch of named characters with the cool abilities, which are neat, but not really something that I would try to get a whole bunch of. Look at all three of those things after you're already starting collecting another army, and you're like, hey, I kind of want an assassin. Throw an assassin in there. Unless you're playing custodians, then check out the Sisters of Silence, because the custodians' biggest weakness is psychic, and the sisters do a great job of cutting that down. All right, let's move on to chaos. So we got the chaos demons to start off with. Chaos demons follow one of four gods, Korn, Zinch, Nurgle, or Slanesh Big Titty. With Slanesh Big Titty, you're going for melee and fast. You are all melee, you've got no shooting, you got good psychic spells, but you're running in there at Mach 5. Papa Nurgle? Papa Nurgle is slow, but tanky as hell. Zinch? A little bit in between, but tons of psychic spells. Corn, No psychic? Melee hits like a truck. Pretty much all of the Chaos Demon factions are glass cannons and very heavy into melee. You got some good psychers for a lot, about three of the four, because Corn I don't think has any. So there is still plenty of variety in there, but what you're doing is you got a whole bunch of big glass cannon demons that run up and just break your face. That's Chaos Demons in a nutshell. They all have their various traits. Sledge is fast and hits a lot of times. Nurgle is tanky, Zinch is psyker, Corn hits really hard. Pretty simple in that sense. But overall, Chaos Demons, to collect them, they're not something you would really collect by themselves. You would ally them in with things like Chaos Space Marines, which we're gonna be talking about in just a moment. But as an army in their own right, don't try to make a demon army, I wouldn't say. They don't teach you a ton of the game and they're a little bit limited because you have to stick with one Chaos faction normally. If you wanna ally in multiple things, you're probably gonna need some Chaos Space Marines to go along with it. And with that, 
Let's talk about that. Chaos Space Marines, uh, you're kind of getting the butt end of J Games Workshop. They don't really seem to like you, Chaos, that much. I don't know why. A lot of your models aren't very new, and a lot of them are expensive, and your rules aren't that great most of the time, with the exception of something that happened in 7th edition with Chaos Demons, apparently. I heard it was a very, very strong codex. Chaos Space Marines are very similar to regular Space Marines, uh, but they're much more focused on melee combats. You still have shooting, and it depends on which faction you're going through as well, but while you do have your shooting units, it is generally more melee-based, I'd say. Demons in their own right, and Chaos in their own right, want to run in there and start breaking face. That's generally their MO. As for Chaos Space Marines, it depends on what legion you're joining, but overall, there are a ton of different ways for you to go ahead and get about completing your objective. Uh, the Death Guard and the Thousand Sons, I believe, are the most fleshed out. They both have their own codexes. They both have their own special units, especially Death Guard. Death Guard is very recent, and both of them allow you to feel the Primarch, which might be one of the coolest parts about them. You can run Mortarion or Magnus the Red, both gigantic, beautiful models that are just awesome showpieces to have. They get shot a lot, but they're, once they get into combat, oh man, do they cause problems. As stated before, you should be building what you'd like, of course. What you enjoy is the most important part of it. But as for Chaos, it's really, you gotta like melee combat, and you gotta like different kinds of allying, probably. I'd say demons aren't, a, well, not demons, but Chaos in general, isn't a great faction to start off with as a new player, because you need to understand the intricacies of how to do army building, and knowing what you're running a little bit more prevalent. And so I'd wait on doing anything Chaos related, at least until they get a solid update, or someone teaches you or you get a little more into the hobby. With the exception of Death Guard. I think Death Guard is in a good place for a new player, because Death Guard is pretty cool. But besides that, they're a little tough. Okay, let's talk about some Xeno, starting off with the Space Elves, the Eldar. So the Eldar are definitely a more glass cannon-y kind of style group. They are the first Xenos race we're talking about, and there are a couple versions. There's also the Jukari and the Harlequins. However, the Eldar, they are strike hard, strike fast, and get out of there immediately. So the thing about Eldar is what would happen is they would fly out of somewhere, immediately gun down with extremely high power weaponry, hitting on threes with some kind of BS stratagems, if I'm being honest, and then they can zip back into cover and really annoy you. Honestly, Eldar probably have some of the more powerful shenanigans when it comes to the game. They have lots of weird rules. Their stuff hits extremely hard. But of course, once you fire back at them, if you live, they will crumble under a slight breeze to an extent. If you play Eldar, you won't be making a bunch of friends, if I'm being honest. I'd say Eldar are top three most aggravating enemies to fight against. Uh, people don't like fighting Eldar a whole lot. Uh, myself included, I find them to be quite aggravating. But if you're that kind of person who likes zip in, zip out, and be all kind of trickery and, and sneaky, they're definitely the army for you. Uh, they're definitely more shooting and psychic based. That's the two main things. They've got some good melee, but mainly shooting and psychic base. Uh, as for collecting craft world Eldar, I'd say that they're they got some good sculpts. Some of their models look pretty good. They got some nice plastic. A few of it's a little bit older, but you don't need a huge army. So when it comes to the money side of it, not too bad. I'd say the financials for it are pretty dang solid, and I wouldn't call them an expensive army to collect, at least not from my knowledge. The Dark Eldar, or the Jukari, are like Eldar cranked up to 12. They're faster, they can hit harder at some points, and they have really good melee units. Their melee units can actually be really scary, but they are also doubly made of paper. They're also a lot harder to play. They're probably top three hardest armies to play along with the Sisters of Battle. And that actually goes on to the Harlequins as well. Harlequins are an army that just don't collect Harlequins, if I'm being honest. They're not a great choice. They have barely any models and they're really weird and, and they have a lot of shenanigans if you want to pull them off. If you're a new player, I would not recommend Harlequins at all. Dark Eldar, Eldar, and Harlequins, speedy, made of paper, hit like absolute trucks, and not too expensive, I wouldn't say. Drakari, I think, is a little bit more expensive than the, than the other two, but not too pricey because you don't feel a ton of units in your armies. Moving on, we got Tyranids, bugs. Yeah, got bugs, bugs, bugs. You gotta love those bugs. 
so many bugs. Now, Tyranids obviously are a horde army. It should be very obvious. They are also a melee horde army. Whoa, I know. Call the presses. You are mainly spending your time in the melee phase as well as some of the psychic phase. You got a lot of good psychers in the Tyranids army, funny enough. You've got some pretty involved and advanced bugs. And your melee phase is, is as it seems. You have really gigantic gargantuan creatures that eat everything alive. Or you've got 40,000 little boys that eat everything alive. You do actually have some somewhat good shooting too with your exocrine and your hive guard you can put out some pretty decent shots they are definitely the kind of army you run if you want big swaths of just these angry little running bug dudes that just swarm on your enemy it's literally called the tyranid swarm as for price wise though i'd say they're actually very very expensive to collect their scopes are some are a little bit older, but not all of them. They're a little bit in between when it comes to the actual uh, date release for their scopes. I'd say they are a bit older, uh, though they are expensive. They're expensive and you're running a horde army. So that's definitely one of the top, or top more expensive armies to collect because, come on, tons of bugs, tons of models, and older scopes. Can be a little bit of a challenge. Gene Stealer Colts. You want to play bugs, but you want to play human bugs with scrotum heads. Gene Stealer Colts are a very new addition. Very, very new. And they run in this almost as weird as Admech style army. They're very fast, they hit really hard, and they like dip underground, they crawl from underground, they hit you with very powerful short range weaponry and super strong melee attack, and then they kind of run away and they, they like zip, hit and run, hit and run tactics. That's probably the best way to do it. Hit and run tactics, they come out of the ground, they, they spook you, they do a bunch of damage, they run away, they got some weird psychic spells here and there, they run these like makeshift Mad Max trucks and stuff. They definitely have a, a unique play style. They deploy strangely, they like to zip around the place kind of strangely, and they definitely are one of the more unique armies there are. Would I recommend collecting them? No. Uh, they kind of fulfill a niche, but they're not that, like, overarchingly special, I'd say. I don't know what the word is exactly, but they are a very specific play style for a very specific player. If you're running Tyranids, you might consider doing Gene Stealer Colts, but at that point, you already kind of know what you're doing, so I don't think I'd recommend this to a new player. Gene Stealer Colts and Tyranids both a little bit rough to recommend to a new person because they are very expensive, both of them. And while the models for Gene Stealer Colts are definitely a lot newer and that's much nicer, they need practice. They are definitely a harder army and I would recommend waiting on those if you're a new player. Orcs! Orcs. Orcs, orcs, orcs. Now, orcs. I would say orcs are great if you like the Horde army and you like having RNG dictate your life. So orcs head on fives as I mentioned in my last video. However, if you roll a six, you get to make another attack with the weapon. Everything from the little pistol to the giant rocket launcher. You can have a rocket launcher that fires three times, and if you get lucky enough, you can have it fire five times. Cuz. But the main thing that you're probably gonna be jumping with orcs for is the giant green tide, because their melee ability is pretty humongous. They have very weird gunfire. They got their weird weapons and their strange rules, the daka 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 rules to allow them to get all these extra shots. And they can even have some pretty dang good shooting with things like shock attack guns and daka jets and stuff. If orcs hit on fives and shooting, they hit on like threes in melee. Orcs love to beat the hell out of each other. So it's very obvious that once they get into melee, they'll just start pounding on you because they are really good at hitting stuff. In fact, I might be speaking a little bit too hyperbolically when I say R RNG controls your life with orcs, uh, or RNG controls your shooting, but your melee is actually pretty dang good. They've got a special ability called Here We Go, which allows them to re-roll their charge dice, which is a very rare thing and extremely powerful buff. Getting into melee has never been easier if you're an orc. Uh, as for collecting orcs, expensive. Probably the most expensive horde army there is. Probably more expensive than Tyranids or Guard or anything in between. They have scopes that are sometimes new, sometimes very old. You can have cool new models like Gaskal Thraka, but then you got a whole bunch of really damn old orc models because orcs have been around forever. Uh, their codex in their own right is pretty, pretty neat and there's some pretty good models in there, but orcs just, they're showing their age and you need a shitload of them. And they are very expensive for that reason. So they're expensive to collect and you need a ton to collect a good sized army. But playing them, if you like melee with some really fun shenanigans and a bit of RNG, I can see why someone would like orcs because they're orcs. Come on, they're just, 
They're great. Let's talk Necrons. So the Necrons, if I had to pick a Xenos army, I'd play Necrons, honestly. Necrons, I mean, they're just so cool. Undead, Egyptian, skeleton robots that carry enslaved gods into battle. How is that the coolest thing ever? So Necrons are fittingly named blah, 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 necromancy, but not like the undead homina 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 necromancy, but like necromancy through metal. So the way Necrons are is that they are kind of a slow moving, at least some of their units slow moving, gun line with some mixed in melee units. Not all their army is melee, but their melee units that they have are actually like like really scary. But for a while, Necrons are kind of slow moving Terminator style guys. They just blast you away at a distance with some very powerful weaponry. They kind of have Space Marine stat lines actually. They run about as many models as Space Marines. They got similar stat lines and similar weaponry. I say that they are actually quite, quite similar to Space Marines in the terms of how they play, but they actually do have a lot of weird shenanigans that make Necrons their own. For instance, the main thing that you might want to pick Necrons for is their reanimation protocols. Special ability that, let's say you got 10 units of your base Necron unit, uh, warriors, for instance. You got 10 Necron warriors, your basic troop choice. Your an opponent kills like, let's say seven. Kills seven of them, you got three of them left. Their turn ends, your turn starts. You then roll a dice for every dead model. So seven models, seven dice. And for every five or higher, you automatically get one of your models to just stand right back up. Your Necron just goes like ch -ch 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 -ch. Your vehicles regenerate health as time goes on. You have special abilities to maybe make your Necrons come back on a four up instead of a five. You can reroll your ones for it. It's all about getting your units to come back up and being like, if you're fighting Necrons, you better kill it. Because if you leave it wounded, it's gonna repair itself, and that's not a very good thing. That's the idea of Necrons. They got good shooting, they got good melee, and honestly, now is a good time to be a Necron player. They are getting a massive update right now. This is right before 9th when this video is coming out. And they are getting huge new model ranges. A ton of just new units in general. Massive updates, rule updates. Necrons are getting big, big additions. And I think it's going to be super great. Now is a good time to be a Necron player. The new stuff might be a little expensive to collect because it is new stuff. That being said, they're not an elite army. But they, I guess they can't be played an elite army if they wanted to. But they don't have a few models. They don't have too many models. They're nice in between. And now is a damn good time for it. Last but not least, we have the Tau Empire. The Tau Empire is for people who want to gun their opponent down with the most sci-fi, hardcore, Gundam, giant mech stuff you can think of. You want to have your entire enemy obliterated off the board through just the unrelenting volley of railgun shots and rail rifles and fusion blasters. You will look up and you will see missiles, giant homing missiles, blot out the sky as it rains down on your army because the Tau player's got 40,000 missile pods on all of his characters. He's got flying drones to fire laser sights to mark them to have better accuracy, to, to block shots, and you know, your big battle suit will be rolling up and then a drone will come in and, and block a missile from it. Uh, the tower definitely more of an Eastern inspired, definitely a Gundam kind of look to them. And they are just ludicrously powerful in shooting phase. And they also have tons of special abilities to stop your opponent from getting to you in the charge phase. The Tau has no melee. Their melee is straight garbage. When a Tau infantry start punching, it means they've lost. And you might think to yourself, wow, Berkey, this sounds great and aggravating. Yep, that's about right. The Tau get a lot of shit. Uh, some of it warranted, some of it not so warranted. The models in their own right definitely don't fit very well with 40k. They're much more of a sci-fi Gundam style thing compared to a gothic grim dark sci-fi fantasy. However, I do think they do look pretty cool in their own right. It's just kind of weird in this universe. But when you've got an entire army whose whole job is to blast you away from a incredible ranges across the map and every time you even try to retaliate they either gun you down when you try to charge or they block your shots with drones it can be pretty aggravating that being said there are really cool new ways to play tau like close range attacks with cold star battle suits in the far side enclaves which by the way if you ever use a cold star battle suit or a cold star commander i suppose or a yavara you have my respect so you do have different options when it comes to Tau instead of just sit back and fire. But you definitely don't got much melee. It's You definitely don't got much melee. You suck. 
at melee. But if you just want to gun people down and the only phase you care about is the shooting phase, you don't care about psyche, you don't care about melee, you just want to blast people, Tau is definitely for you. As it comes for collecting them, their scopes are pretty good. They're not entirely super new, but they do look great. They have a whole bunch of different kinds of mechs, big and small. They got drones, big and small. They got infantry units and everything. They do look solid, high tech, and their scopes do look nice. They're also, I'd say, not too expensive. Uh, you don't need a ton of them, and the battle suits themselves are expensive for each box, but you only need so many of them because they are very expensive when it comes to the points cost in the game. So tower on the middle level of the expensive tier. Whew, that was a lot of talking right there. Uh, that is covers it though. That is every army in 40k for you trying to figure out which army you want to play. I will reiterate, Space Marines, they are the best. I know it kind of sucks for some of us, but trust me, they are the best. I would highly recommend if you're trying to get into it, get a box of Intercessors, check out the rules, Pin them up maybe. Ninth edition is coming very, very soon. It looks extremely promising. And I think now is probably the best time to be jumping into this hobby. I want more people to be a part of this community, to be a part of this fandom. I think it is exciting. I think it has a little something for everyone. And I don't want anyone at all to not feel welcomed, not on any basis, not on basis of age, sex, gender, race. I don't, I don't give a shit, okay? I don't care who you are, I want you to at least give it a shot and be a part of this group with me because I would always love new people and honestly, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a good time along with the rest of us. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching this video everybody, it was a pleasure having you here. Check out this plate in the description please, they are the wonderful sponsor for today's video and they were actually quite wonderful to work with as well and plus with so much Warhammer stuff I'm sure you can find something that you can definitely decorate your wall with for a decent price as well. As for me, my name has been Bricky, I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me, as you can see all the names flying up on the screen right now, these are all the people on the $10 or up tier who have decided to help support support me on my videos. You are all absolutely wonderful. And I want to give a special shout out to my top three patrons currently, which are Big Papa Nergs, which is so fitting for today, Drunken Legends, the absolute crazy Texas man, and of course, Krieg the Psycho, which is a wonderful Borderlands reference. The three of you, you are on the top tier for Patreon, and I really do appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to make this many videos without you guys, and it is wonderful having you here. And I see you on the Twitch stream all the time, so I know, I know you guys, I know you around. It's good, I'll see you soon. Besides that, if you want to check out my Twitch stream, I stream multiple times a week, it is in the description. I would love to have you there. We can talk a little bit, Warhammer or anything in between, just play some games. And finally, if you're interested in copying some merchandise like the one I'm wearing, or maybe just get a little bit of B stickers up in your world, check that out too. All right, I don't know what video I'm making next. It might be a League one, but I might hop onto more 9th edition stuff when 9th edition comes out. Perhaps I'll even make a video on how to play it. But until then, thank you so much for watching. My name is Bricky, and the Emperor protects. Bye-bye.